Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Solar ship developing new electric bush plane with Zen Air. Legislation introduced to thwart ATC privatization. And plane versus gator, gator loses. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 13th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Solar Ship and Zen Air Limited have announced an agreement to convert the existing Zen Air SDOL CH750 aircraft into an electric bush plane. This new aircraft will provide extreme short takeoff and landing capability, enabling pilots to take off in areas without runways. The aircraft is recharged by either a battery swap or electric vehicle rechargers. It will not use fossil fuel and will be available as a bush plane, float, or amphibious. The electric bush plane project is part of Zenair and Solar Ship's ongoing partnership since 2011 when Zenair developed the fuselage for Solar Ship's Zenship 11, a hybrid aircraft able to take off and land from a soccer field to deliver critical cargo for disaster relief. Jay Godzell, CEO, Solar Ship notes, we have been working with Zenair to ensure we could deliver the right power, weight, and reliability for their aircraft. The new electric bush plane will be complemented by a network of low-cost solar-powered hangars able to provide battery swap stations in remote areas. Once you buy this aircraft, you break free from the shackles of oil and you never need to refuel again. It is complete self-reliance. Representative Rick Larson joined by Representative Peter DeFazio and Democrats on the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure are rejecting President Trump's plan to privatize America's ATC system. Larson has introduced H.R. 2800, the Aviation Funding Stability Act of 2017, which aims to strengthen and speed up the reform taking place at the FAA. Larson said, this bill meaningfully complements NextGen's progress by providing certainty to the FAA's funding streams and boosting reforms to the FAA's personnel and procurement systems. This bill presents an opportunity to accelerate modernization of the FAA, which is something I think folks on both sides of the aisle can get behind. DeFazio said, if we truly want to fix the real problems facing the FAA today, the solution is simple. Congress can and should pass targeted reforms. Today, Democrats on the Transportation Committee offer targeted measures that guarantee that investments in our aviation system are not subject to congressional dysfunction. Our, our alternative provides a stable, predictable funding stream for aviation programs, directs the FAA to run modernization programs using streamlined best practices, requires FAA to reform its personnel system, gives users a bigger role in the managing the aviation system through the FAA's Management Advisory Council, and authorizes funding to rebuild and modernize aging air traffic control facilities. After the break, plane versus gator, gator loses. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at earl-news.net. Wouldn't you love to be the insurance agent that handles this claim? A pilot landing on runway 7 at Orlando Executive Airport hit a large alligator. 
that had strayed onto the runway. According to a tweet from local pilot Brad Pierce, who was not the pilot involved in the incident, the 11-foot alligator jumped up and struck the wing of the Piper Navajo as it was landing at night. The gator was killed instantly, and the aircraft sustained damage to the wing. The pilot, identified by the station as Rick Cross, would not comment while the incident was under investigation by the FAA. He was not injured. Two lakes adjoined the airport. An airport spokesman said that the gator was on the center line of the runway when Cross touched down. Pierce said he had never before seen a gator on a runway or taxiway at KORL. He said that the Greater Orlando Airport Authority does a really nice job of ensuring there is a nice harmony and balance between nature and man and the machines that are out there. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. This week, let's look at some seaplane friendly events. June 16th through 18th is the Grand Marais Bay Seaplane Splash in Michigan. Since 1997, this wonderful event has included a water contest on Saturday and dinner in the evening. Official registration begins on Friday, followed by a potluck cookout. Pilots are welcome to arrive on Thursday for an informal beach party. June 17th is the Seaplane Splash in Lake Murray, South Dakota. This social gathering, which began in 2012, is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hamburgers, brats, and drinks provided. Please bring a dish to share. Unicom 123.40. Just look for the sea bees on the beach. And July 1st is the Wisconsin Price County Airport float in Flyin'. Flyin' Buffet Breakfast at Arborview Eatery adjacent to the Price County Airport on Long Lake. Anyone flying in eats for free. 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. float planes land on Long Lake immediately west of PBH Airport. After these messages, FlexJet is hiring. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. FlexJet has resumed external hiring of pilots for the first time since 2015. FlexJet plans to hire a significant number of pilots to handle new business that increased 50% in the first five months of 2017, compared to the same period in 2016, on top of 20% growth in new business during 2016. Honeywell has signed an agreement with Viet Jet Air for 98 auxiliary power units for the airline's new fleet of Airbus A320 aircraft. Honeywell currently supplies Viet Jet Air with APUs across the airline's entire fleet of 135 A320s. This new agreement runs through 2022 and includes maintenance servicing for 12 years. The total value of the contract is over $100 million. Textron subsidiary True Simulation Plus Training has received full program certification for its Cessna Citation Latitude and Cessna Citation Sovereign Plus Pilot Training Program and is now accepting students at its True ProFlight Pilot Training Center in Tampa. In March 2017, the full flight simulator for the Latitude Sovereign Plus program successfully received Level D qualification by the FAA. The pilot of an ultralight aircraft that went down in treetops near South Shore Regional Airport in Nova Scotia, Canada, 
must find a way to get the aircraft out of the trees on his own. The pilot was not injured when his aircraft lost power and he set it down. Because there were no injuries, the TSB declined to respond to the accident and said it was the responsibility of the pilot and his insurance company to retrieve the airplane. Rolls-Royce has opened its new engine services airline aircraft availability center. Using data analytics, the center in Derby, UK plans engine operations and maintenance, driving efficiency in an industry where a 1% fuel saving can be worth $250,000 per aircraft per year. And an out-of-service aircraft can cost an airline thousands of dollars a day. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. The woman who became the first female commander of Marine One has been fired from the post. According to the U.S. Marine Corps, 45-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer Greaves was relieved from command of Marine Heavy Helicopter Squadron 464 a CH-53E Super Stallion Squadron out of Marine Corps Air Station New River due to a loss of trust and confidence in her ability to continue to lead. Greaves was fired by Major General Matthew Glavy, commander of the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing, in the wake of an off-duty incident that was not properly reported. Greaves was reportedly arrested at her home following a domestic argument on December 16th at about 3 a.m., she was charged with simple assault. She was released on a $500 bond, and the case has reportedly not been resolved. On May 14, 2008, Captain Greaves was selected by the commanding officer as one of five pilots authorized to serve as the helicopter aircraft commander to the President of the United States of America. Captain Greaves was promoted to major on August 1st, 2008 and served as Marine One pilot for HMX-1 until August 3rd, 2009. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. Do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>